this is Ian. Welcome to another video. Today we are doing another story. We are doing another chapter in um, the Clockwork Chronicles, book four, an obstacle. We are reading chapter 16. Yeah, hopefully chapter 16. But if we do have time and this is a short chapter, you know, we'll continue. But yeah, <laughs> it just depends. Depends on whether or not, I don't know when I start the video, like, maybe I'll spontaneously do another chapter two because, mm, you never know. Well, obviously you would know by the amount of minutes in the video. <laughs> but anyway, you know what you need to do. If you haven't read any of the other chapters, be sure you do so. And hit the bell if you haven't, or subscribe if you're enjoying this. I'm saying this in the wrong order. If you are enjoying the video, be sure to like the video and subscribe. Hit the bell so you know when the next story will come out. You don't want to miss it. Because <laughs> you can get lost pretty fast. Like, of course it's in the playlist, but until that point, you don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you have any questions about the story so far, let me know. I can answer them for you. If you have any or questions or anything to get or just you know, you know how they say these things work but I do anyway chapter 16 this might be a very eventful one if I may do this on myself and I might miss it I keep forgetting to turn it on oh wait oh wait chapter 16 let us do this <laughs> then you swift turn. It had been a few days since Sam and Squishy had come over to stay with them, and Stampy was glad that they had. Just seeing them and knowing they were safe helped him feel so much better. Every day gave him more strength to overcome what he suffered through. When his, when his supposed allies had tried to finish him. He knew they were still out there, and they wouldn't take no as an answer, especially when their plan had been spoiled so badly. <laughs> Stampy was sitting alone in his small bedroom. His friends weren't too far away, probably talking about what they should do next. Part of him wanted to join them so that he could come up with something Though they could come up with something together, but part of him wanted to stay here and relax, join the brief moment list to follow. But he could he even be alone for very long at all anymore. Should it be okay now? No one had tried anything since the last attack. Should he be nervous or would he just be paranoid? I'm sure. The cat took a deep breath as they tried to think about everything that had happened in the past few days. He'd been rescued by his sister and her friends, reunited with his other friends. He didn't know where he would have been if his friends hadn't come in when they did to rescue him, saved him from his own enemies. The very people that were meant to protect him, like some other things, would have been if his friends hadn't come to his rescue. He was alive because of his friends, refused to give up on him, stopping Mr. A's plan time and time again. That man might be getting tired of that by now. Just like he was getting tired of fearing for his life, for the fearing of his life aspect. For his life aspect. Oh, poor Stampy. <laughs> but as he sat there in silence, trying his best not to think about the horrible things that the men had said or done to him, he couldn't help but shake off the creepy, creepy carling feeling that someone was watching him. He looked around him, but he couldn't see anything. The window was empty. The only opening out to the woods. Wait, what? Out to the woods below. Okay, I was reading the right sentence. <laughs> I jump around a lot. <laughs> the room was clean and empty of guests besides himself, but it only grew as he felt the fur on his back of his neck standing in. Is someone there? And the cat asked as he went to stand, feeling a shiver fill him. He 
couldn't help but notice just how shaky his voice had been. But he said it. He did not know what was eyeing him. It spooked him out. It made him nervous. It made him feel very uncomfortable. As eerie long moments passed, the cat heard nothing. No sounds of footsteps. No announcement revealing who they were. Silence. Feeling in the grill. Something. Seeming to close around him. I know you're there. Show yourself, the cat demanded, defiantly, trying to sound braver than he actually was. Trying to seem unafraid of this mysterious person or thing that was stalking him. Were they behind the walls? Is it possible? What should he do? Should he try to run for the door and find his friends and tell them what happened? What did he feel? Or what did they think? He was just being paranoid. Was he going crazy? He didn't know. Since it seemed pretty set on um, that something or someone was watching him somewhere. As it followed, silence continued. Finally standing as he began to walk to the door. But as he went for it, he heard what sounded like an opening door. Heavy, big door. The cat turned to see that part of the wall was being pushed back, revealing a tall man looking back at him. His dark eyes gleaming with satisfaction as he met eyes with him. The cat's heart skipped a startled beat as he ran for the door. But as he got to it, he tried to turn the handle, slowly realized that it was locked. How could it be? Had his fence locked it so people couldn't sneak in? Or had someone locked it to prevent him from escaping? How nice of you to come join me. The man chuckled as the cat turned, seeing the man coming closer to him. Should he try to barge down the door, call for help? Would his friend even hear him? He has to try. What do you want? The cat said, trying his best to mask the frightened emotions that were crashing all around him. Fear, anxiety, uncertainty, worry, panic, and so much more. I think you know very well what I want and what my allies want, the man sneered. And unfortunately for you, you made sure no one could come for you. But you're lying, the cat said. The door is locked, and we threw away the key, the man said, fidgeting with his hands maliciously. We snuck in unannounced, planted ourselves perfectly. I'm not getting out of this one. Not this time. I don't believe you, the guy said defiantly. The man chuckled. I don't believe me. It doesn't make me need true. Not true. The guy shuddered as he pushed himself against the door. Should he try to use the same secret the man had? out of the window? Would the man stop him before he could? He need to do something. How about we do this the easy way, cat? The man said slowly. You are obviously cornered here. Just give me a chance to seal your fate. And no one else will have to ask any questions. You get punished for this, the guy said. Yeah, but you're wrong. I only got a warning. A slap on the wrist, you see. The man mused. I was only too to stay away from you. Of course, I couldn't resist, but disobey. There's a reason for that, the guy said simply. Because your lies have corrupted us, the man growled, torn us apart and made us choose sides. Your lies ruined us, just like they were ruining you. The guy shook his head slowly. They were, those weren't my lies. Can you prove it? The man snapped. Can you prove your innocence? Sam was there, the guy said. So was were Liam and Dan. You could ask them. I can't rely on their words. Because they're influenced by your lies, the man sneered. You've twisted and muddled the truth, so it would benefit you. Now you'll finally see the result of that. By paying for it. With my life? The cat asked nervously. Will that solve anything? Is it worth it for you? Not that much? Would it be enough for you? More than enough, the man sneered. The guy shook his head again. Those lies will still be there, even if you kill me. Those lies will still keep everyone apart. In fact, it'll probably split everyone even more because of what you're planning to do. I doubt it, the man snorted as he came even closer. It's true, the cat admitted. You may not believe me, but that kind of thing has happened before too often. You know it. The subject here, the man said coldly as he came closer. Now, we have ten feet, ten feet away. Part of you does, the cat said calmly, even though he felt everything but calm. 
liar. The man snapped as he lunged at the cat. Snappy screamed as he dodged the man, calling for help as he ran for the secret door. But before he could, the man tackled him to the ground, sitting on top of him as the cat tried to look up. But he couldn't. The man was pinning him to, to the ground, crushing him against his weight. Get off me, the cat cried as he struggled helplessly against the man, creating pressure as the man leaned in to whisper in his ear. The cat uttered a dagger being extended. This is what you deserve, cat, the man whispered. The cause would be a far better place without you in it. You're wrong, the cat gasped, groaning in pain, wanting to cry out, to scream even more, but the man was keeping him down, squeezing the air out of him. You know it, right? The man said smoothly, as the cat saw a glint of metal hit the light in the corner of his eye. A shiver ran through him as he eyed the blade, too scared to move, too scared to do anything. Please don't, the cat groaned as he tried to cough, growing weaker and weaker as he saw dark spots appearing in his vision. Ah, I can't breathe. Not like said that. The man chuckled. Coldly, the cat watched the dagger come even ever so closer, growing weaker and weaker. Please, someone help me. The cat gasped, finding it harder and harder to speak. The moment seemed to drag on, as if the man was waiting to be the perfect spot to strike him. No one can help me now, the man sneered. You're dead to them. Suddenly, they heard a loud thud by the door. Then another, and then another, before it crashed to the ground. The cat tried to look up to see what was going on, but the man pushed his head down at the cat groaned. Stampy! A voice cried as someone tackled the man off him. The cat coughed, took a deep breath as fresh air as tears fell down his face. He felt arms wrap around him. His body, his body shook, tired and relieved, frightened but safe. His arms were warm and welcoming, a protective shield around him, keeping him away from the dangers that lay outside him. Happy? Are you okay? The voice asked softly. The cat looked up to see a yellow duckling looking back at him. Her eyes were full of concern. The cat managed to nod. I'm okay, the cat said shakily. I just... Now I need a moment to catch my breath. Well, <laughs> beard on her face and she nodded, letting go to give him some space. The cat leaned against the wall, trying to bring back a normal rhythm. The cat finally managed to wipe away the tears out of his eyes. His heart began to slow beating it as it normally would. He was safe. He was alive. His friends had come to his rescue, but something seemed off. Something didn't feel right. I can't stay here, the cat finally admitted. Loud enough for Squishy to hear, she looked up to see Sam and Nitty approaching them. How are you faring, Stampy? Sam asked once they came up to him. I've been better, the cat said sheepishly, but I'll be fine. Are you sure? The Nitty asked nervously. I'm sure. Cat replied, "You didn't hurt me too much." Still, take this," the boy said, holding out a healing potion to him. "It'll help." The cat nodded and took it, downing the red liquid until the bottle was completely cleaned. "Thank you." "No problem," the boy said with a smile as he held a hand. "Let me help you up." Cat hesitated, looking over at the duckling, who was too also standing. Before he finally took the boy's hand and stumbled to his feet. "Is the man gone?" the cat asked. After a long moment, looking around the empty room. Martin and Santiago chased him off, Nettie said. I don't know if they got him, but he's gone, for now at least. I should go home. Are you sure you're up for it? Sam asked for some to you. Especially after this? I'll manage, the cat sighed. I just want him to come back. I want to go somewhere I know where I can feel safer. Nettie nodded. Santiago comes back when you go. Are you coming with us? The cat asked curiously. She shook her head and slowly smiled. And smiled. No, I need to stay here. But if I can come for a visit, I'll be sure to do it. It's a friend, of course. Of course. The cat agreed with a chuckle. Thank you for letting us stay here. You need to get better, she would. I just don't know if now is a good time after that epidemic. He'll do worse if he finds me alone again, the cat said. I don't want to give him that luxury. That's fine with me, squished she replied softly. Glad you're okay. Glad your came, guys came to help. The cat said quietly. To put friends still. The boy said with a laugh. The sound and I said with a laugh. We'll be there for you every step of the way. Good, because I need all the help I can get. The cat admitted. I want to go home. No one said any more. 
for a long time until Santiago returned and Nettie had a few words with him about what her brother had told her. Sabi was partially nervous of what he might say, but he had been okay with it. Saying them to get would know better when he was ready to go home than they would. No, if that was always true, but in this case, he was just glad he could finally get a chance to return home. See his helpers again. She talks again. To be home in his world where things were what they were supposed to be. But would that be would it be that easy? Probably not. But at least he would be home. A place he knew well. And that was very good. He needed something that could that he could hold on to. Bring home with his friends felt like the kind of thing that would do the job nicely. Those men wouldn't stand a chance next time. They would make sure that together, just like they always done it, and would have no way. Yeah, we're gonna have to end that chapter there. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching, and you know. I hope you enjoyed this nice little chapter that I've done. Like, yeah, yeah. If you want to read the other chapters, feel free. Feel free to do so. And yeah, I know the video that I've already recorded touring the town, the town where Nettie lives, is definitely coming out soon. Like. Probably very soon. I thought it would be like chapter 20, but no. This is a good time, so yeah. Soon. <sighs> yeah, which is fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. I'll see you later. Bye.